We are going down. We are going down to exactly the same fate which destroyed the greatest civilization the world has seen before the modern age, the civilization of ancient Greece. When you had in quite a small area a number of city-states hating each other, fighting each other, tearing and destroying each other, and the wonderful thing which had produced thought, art, literature, of an incredible beauty which has adorned the ages ever since. That wonder of Greece was destroyed because they could not realize the brotherhood of Hellas and lived together in friendship and in amity and in love together. And they quarreled over small things, ridiculous little things, like we quarreled with the Germans about, like we quarreled before with the French about, like we quarreled before with, with many other peoples. Europe's quarrels are nothing in the balance with Europe's great common interests and something greater than any interest, a community of blood and a community of tradition. My friends, it's time we began to think of you. There were days not very long ago when Englishmen and Scotsmen and Welshmen couldn't live together at all, when they fought each other continuously. There were days before that when you had battles between Wessex and Mercia in England. Before that when village fought village. Well, civilization as we know it today is a very recent thing. They were even talking languages that they couldn't understand. But they came together in bigger communities because they had the same blood and the same deep feelings. And they became a nation. And that's exactly what we're asking the European peoples to do. Not to go under in the face of any other disaster of ancient Greece, but to come together with realizing that European blood means an European nation. Why, everything that we've got, all the great things we have in common, we've had the wars which divide us, but we've had the philosophers, the poets, the painters, the sculptors, the artists, the wonders and the genius of the European mind. <laughs> Those are the things which unite Worlds are divided. We've shed blood. Our crime, blood of blood. We fought about nothing. We lost our tempers. Oh, we didn't, for people. We, we did not feel angry. We did not want the wars. Our rulers did. This small, ridiculous clique of conceited and incompetent men who lost their tempers with each other in every country, who quarreled and fought about things which did not matter at all in comparison with this vast possibility of a united Europe. It was the rulers who brought us to ruin, never the people. The peoples will always have been united. If I could show you the French and the Germans and give you for a moment the same language, if for one moment you could come together with those people mixed in this hall, why, well, you'd know you are the same people. You'd feel alike, you'd think alike, you'd live and dream alike. Of course you're the same people and the same family and the same kind. And you've got to live together or you'll die. my friend, is what we're asking you to do. We're asking you to forget that you fought a German yesterday, that you fought a Frenchman the day before that, that you hated the Frenchman then, even more than you hated the German last time. Ask you to forget all the feuds and wars and horror and blood and beastliness that has devoted Europe, and think of the great things that you have together. One thing too, like in the same family, you've got to live together, to get on together, that you cannot live separately. You've got to have this common market, you've got to rise together, you've got to have the economic means of life in common because we cannot carry on as separate states. The days of small countries are gone and we can only live as members of a great community. But it's not only the material thing which is a necessity, it is the spiritual thing which must move us. Let us rise in your spirit.